Welcome to Job Specific Resumes, the second workshop in our three-part series. My name is Jerry Flanders, and I am the workshop coordinator for Career Source Citrus Levy Marion. Today we're going to talk about job specific resumes and how this type of resume will help land your next job opportunity. How many of you have sent out your resume and never get a response back? I see it in our career centers all the time. If there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this workshop, it's that one size does not fit all. Creating one general resume just doesn't cut it anymore. We'll get into what that means and how you create job-specific resumes in this presentation. A little bit about me, so you know who you're taking time to listen to today. I have spent much of my professional career as a business owner and then a workforce development professional. My formal education and training, detailed on the slide, focuses on human resources and workforce management. As a workshop coordinator for Career Source Citrus Levy Marion, I've created course material and facilitated workshops for almost 15 years to help job candidates through challenging economic times. Before the end of this workshop, you'll know what kind of content to include and exclude from your resume and how to make your work history work in your favor. We'll go over a format and template for your job specific resume that is applicant tracking system friendly or ATS friendly. Two, how to begin a job specific resume using the template I'll make available. And then three, I'll showcase an example of a finished job specific resume for a job candidate. I'm going to highlight some online resources that you can reference or download later for your use all of which are free resources. Finally, at the end of this presentation, I'll go over some frequently asked questions that will hopefully fill in any holes that I've missed. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's begin with what's most important in any resume, content. Hiring managers have a limited amount of time to look through a stack of resumes. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The average recruiter or hiring manager spends 10 to 15 seconds scanning a resume. That's right, 10 to 15 seconds. And that was before the current economic downturn. Now you can expect that employers will receive a much larger number of candidates for their job openings. In short, the volume will be high, the competition will be keener, and employers will spend even less time, more like five to eight seconds, to decide whether you will move to the interview stage. To catch their attention, you need to know what kind of content they are looking for and how to best show it off. Anytime you submit an online job application, your resume will automatically run through Applicant Tracking System or ATS software before it reaches human resources. So that stack of resumes I was talking about earlier, the ones that got an average review of five to eight seconds, those are the ones that survived the virtual culling. How can your resume make it through that stack? You have to use keywords from the job at posting. The software isn't very smart. It's just picking out key phrases and words from your resume that have been predetermined by the employer. So if you use the right words, job specific words, the software will tag your resume as a potential match for the position. Your resume should not exceed two pages. For some individuals, a one-page resume is sufficient, but for most, you're likely to have a two-page resume. Remember, the applicant tracking system doesn't care if it's one or two pages. What is most important is that you have included the right keywords in your skills and qualifications, previous work history, and your education or credentials. You want to focus your content to the job you're applying for, all to demonstrate you know the job 
and you have the skills, work experience, and qualifications that tell the employer you are goal-oriented. Anything extra can be brought up later, either in the strategic cover letter or in the interview. A great way to focus your message is to know what kind of content you are going to put into your job-specific resume. When deciding what content to include or exclude, start with just the past 10 years of employment. Do not provide your entire work history. Why? Most applications ask for your past 10 years. The application, whether it's a hard copy or an electronic version, is almost always a legal document. You want to focus on your relevant skills and qualifications that make you a fit. But employers also want to know your real work experience, too. In short, hiring managers are interested in your current or relevant experiences and how it relates to what they are looking for today. Your job-specific resume should be able to stand on its own. It will connect you to the position you're interested in. Your strategic cover letter will offer added value that supports your resume. It will provide work or life context that shapes your interest in the position and does what most individuals fail to do. It asks for the interview. Fitting all you need in a one-page resume is too ambitious for most job candidates. Old school strategies of shrinking the font size and expanding the margins can make your resume so busy that it can be a problem for the applicant tracking system. Even if you make it past the electronic screening, it can be too busy for someone in HR to review in five to eight seconds. It's important for you to focus on and identify relevant information, such as compartmentalizing your skills, qualifications, and work experience in a way that entices them to want to know more. Once you're done, save your resume as a Microsoft Word or RTF, that's also known as a rich text format file, using the following format. Your full name, space, the position you're applying for, space, and the name of the company. For example, Jane Doe, space, cashier, space, Winn-Dixie. This is the first thing an employer will notice that gives them a sense that this is a job-specific resume. Now let's break down the resume even further into sections starting with the summary. Your summary is about three lines that first identifies the exact position by job title that you're applying for. Second, provides a description of you that connects you to the position. And third, identifies the top three skills you bring to the position based on what the employer is looking for per the job description. The next heading is skills and qualification. This section continues your skills and qualifications for the positions. Primarily hard skills, but may also highlight important soft skills the employer is looking for, for which you'll find in the job description. The next heading is key accomplishments. Ideally, identify two or three key accomplishments that paint the picture of you as someone that is goal-oriented and motivated to succeed. Try to relate them to the position. The next heading is volunteer work experience, and here you only add volunteer work experience if it is current or recent and it's related to the nature of the job. Under work experience, you'll highlight the work experience and those tasks and duties that are relevant to the position you are interested in. In education and training, if the formal education goes back a number of years ago, You may want to include one or two recent training events that are relevant to the position. Otherwise, just include your most recent formal education, but leave the dates of graduation off 
and only add those dates if the degree is recent. And lastly, military experience, and that's for veterans only that qualify for veterans preference. Your resume is your marketing piece. It is the first impression a hiring manager will have of you before the interview. So it's important that it looks businesslike. It should demonstrate an effective communication style and critical thinking abilities. The resume should look perfect in its design and be grammatically correct. All of this together will complete the overall look of your job-specific resume. To review, your resume must be targeted to sell your value proposition to the employer, and by that, I mean it should identify the position and demonstrate why you're a good fit. It should clearly state your qualifications and quantify your key accomplishments. In other words, your unique skills, strengths, and accomplishments that add value to the company. Now remember to go slow, not fast. You want to focus on the quality of your work, not quantity. And if you forget everything else, remember these three steps. First, create a general resume. Next, identify and target your skills and qualifications on a job-specific basis. And lastly, include accomplishment statements to demonstrate you are results and outcome-oriented. We haven't talked too much about cover letters, only that it's a helpful tool in expanding on what your resume can. Your cover letter should start with your contact information and match the style of your job-specific resume. Remember, it's the job-specific resume that is scored first and then viewed by human eyes. The strategic cover letter is likely viewed only if they are impressed with the content of the resume. In the first paragraph of your cover letter, restate the job you're applying to and make a reference about being an ideal fit. If you have a detailed job posting, you can include additional skills here that deepen your fit for the position. If you have already established your strong fit in the job-specific resume, you'll want to recap some of your most important assets. Be careful not to copy and paste bullets from the resume, though. Wrap some different language around the keywords from the job posting. In the second paragraph, you can respond to any work or life context that provides insight into your motivation and interest in the position. This is especially important when you are applying for jobs in different fields or you lack recent experience or may be viewed as overqualified or have been away from the world of work for more than six months or have other barriers and obstacles to getting the job offer. Some examples might include, I was born and raised in Crystal River and always hope to return to my hometown. This position offers me the opportunity to do so. Or, I was so impressed by the palliative care my mother received from Hospice of Marion County that I would consider it a privilege to work for you. Or lastly, I've been a lifelong supporter of United Way and admire the charitable role your company plays in the community. In the third paragraph, Ask for the interview. You have spent a considerable amount of time creating your job-specific resume and now your strategic cover letter. You deserve the right to ask for the interview. Cite your enthusiasm and motivation for both the job and being a part of the company. End it graciously with an indication that you look forward to a response in the near future. A targeted resume begins with and prepares you for the end in mind. It will connect you with the company and the job duties. In turn, that will sharpen your focus and prepare you for the interview ahead. A good online resource to help create your resume is EmployFlorida.com. It's Florida's largest online job site. 
Because Employ Florida is where CareerSource CLM works with employers and job candidates, you'll want to have your resume or resumes posted here. While employers can search out your resume, oftentimes it's our business development representatives who will be searching for candidates on behalf of the employer. Once you have created one or two resumes in Employ Florida, continue creating job-specific resumes in a Microsoft Word format. The goal is to build an inventory of job-specific resumes and periodically update Employ Florida with your most current ones. First things first, though, you need to log in or register with Employ Florida by following the prompts on the screen. Once you have logged into your account, you'll see a list of options on the left side of your screen. Click on the link labeled Resume Builder. Next, select Create a New Resume. If you've already started on a resume and want to continue working on it, then there is a spot in the middle of your screen where it will appear. Employ Florida can also be a tool to help you find the keywords you need uh, to use in a job-specific resume. Once you're done, there are options to download your resume or to automatically submit it to job postings on the Employ Florida site. Let's review what we've learned today, and then I'll go over some frequently asked questions that I've received in my workshops in the past. Remember, you want to create a job-specific resume for every position that you apply to. Include and identify the skills that you possess that line up with the job description. Show that you are a hard worker through quantified experiences, not just generalized statements. You can call upon your career source CLM coach to review your new resume and provide constructive feedback. These are some of the top questions I get asked when we do live workshops. The first is, does it matter what email address is included in the resume? The answer is yes. You want to have a business-looking email address with a contemporary internet provider. Be sure to exclude numbers that could look like your age or year of birth. The second question is, is there a template or format that employers prefer? And the answer is yes. You'll want a format that has a clean business look to it and is applicant tracking system friendly. Your career coach will provide you a resume packet and an option of templates to fit your situation. Alternatively, you can download the tools from our corporate website at careersourcelm.com. The next question is, should I include all my jobs on my job-specific resume or only the ones that are relevant to the job I'm applying for? What if I've had the same job for the 10 to 15 years and my earlier experience contributes to my best fit for the position? Well, the answer is this. Remember, when you complete an online employer application, most will require you to provide the last 10 years of your work experience. It's a legal document, so now is not a time to leave things out. Your job-specific resume should include your 10-year work history. However, your career coach can offer options on how to showcase your most relevant experience when it's not one of your most recent work experiences. And the last question is, do I need to include the year I graduated from high school, technical school, or college? And the response is this. If you are a recent graduate, perhaps from the last 7 to 10 years, you will want to include the date. If your formal education, however, goes back a number of years ago, then you will want to leave the date of graduation off. Remember, though, the employer application will likely require you to include the date in order to complete their application process. I know we've covered a lot today, and it can be a little overwhelming. I encourage you to take advantage of the virtual workshops and by working virtually with one of our career coaches, either through email, phone, or video conference. 
Thank you for being with me today. Remember, the resume packet and templates are available for you to download and use. Also, while your resume will get you noticed, you may want to attend the Interview Strategies workshops to learn techniques that will get you remembered and allow you to stand out from the competition. Good luck in your job campaign.